Today, I think, is a, a real watershed uh, day for the club. As you've seen, we've, we've made a number of uh, key, key announcements. And I suppose I look at this as being the closing of one chapter and opening up of a new one, and ho hopefully the opening up of a, a new exciting one. As you know, I plan to stand down as chairman at the end of the AGM on the 16th of December, and my friend here, Dave, is going to pick up the baton and run on with it. Uh, it's also great news for the club today that we're able to announce that there's another five million of investment coming in, and also the fact we're able to announce a strategic partnership with Atlanta United, and it's great to have Darren Eels, uh, president of Atlanta, here with us today, and, and Darren will say a few words later on. After 22 years, I finally get out of jail. I suppose one of the things that I've discovered that it'd be relatively easy getting into a football club, but it's extremely difficult getting out. I think in any business, it's important that there is some form of succession planning taking place, and I think we're fortunate here and that we're able to kick that off um, Quite a few quite a few years ago, uh, with with Dave, when Dave sold his company in America, uh, I thought it maybe meant two things. Uh, first, he's going to have some cash in his pocket, <laughs> and second, hopefully, he's going to have a fair bit of time in his hands. So, we reckon that that was the right time to bounce before he got committed to something else. Uh, as most of you know, Dave and I have uh, kept up a relationship uh, since Dave was back, since Dave was here back in the early 2000s. And after we opened up that initial discussions, things moved forward. Dave agreed to invest some money in the club. He agreed to join the board. And again, as most of you know, he he then. Uh, stepped up to take on the vice chairman role this time last year. He also agreed to take on a leading role in helping us raise funds for the first phase at Kingsford and has done a great job in that and, and bringing in investment through uh, some of his friends and business colleagues and also today uh, Atlanta United. These initial funds brought in over 11 million, and the latest one brings in another 5 million. It puts the club in a very strong position. We've now delivered phase one at Kingsford, and we've got the site set up and serviced, ready for the stadium. There's obviously the huge challenge over the next few years to raise the best part of 45 million to deliver that stadium. But I think it's a challenge that everyone here at the club is very much up to. But what the latest investment means that though the, the club's delivered Kingsford, we're debt free and we've got good work and capital to take us through the next three, four years. I think the the role of chairman at any club is a, a challenging one. I think the role at a club like Aberdeen is very onerous. Over the years, I've given plenty of encouragement to people out there to see if they were prepared to step forward. And I think one of the things that came home loud and clear to me over the last two, three years as part of trying to raise the funding for Kingsford, I think I got in front of most of the people that were potential candidates to take over the role. And the conclusion that I drew, that there's nobody in and around the city 
that is prepared to take on that. Uh, many of the, the financial backing that would be required, but their perception of a uh, chairman's role in a football club is not something in particular that any of them had any desire to do. But I think it were very fortunate uh, uh, Dave has agreed to, to step up and, and take on that role. I think he meets the requirements in both counts. Uh, one, he's got the commitment, he's got the, the passion for Aberdeen as a city, and he's got the passion for the club. And I think over the last few years, he's dem demonstrated his ability to, to bring the investment in. Over the, the last few months, I've spent a fair bit of time convincing Dave that what a wonderful role being a chairman is, highlighting all the upsides you get out of it. After the 16th of December, I think I'll maybe feel obliged to mention one or two of the downsides that come with the job as well. I think the mere fact that it takes over your life it's just something that you've got to learn to live with. The final key aspect of the announcement we've made today is the, the new investment and the, the partnership with Atlanta United. And Dave and Darren will both highlight a bit more on that later on. But I believe that we are very confident that the partnership has the potential to bring real benefits to the club in a number of fronts. It's going to allow us to, to punch above our weight. It's going to help us with our aspiration to achieve the UEFA top 100 status that we are very much aiming for. And at the same time, I think it'll try, it'll help us try and level the playing field a bit more against Celtic and Rangers, as we all know, we are never ever going to come anywhere near challenging them in terms of their, the revenues that they can, can, can generate. So in summary, I think it's the right time for me to stand down. I think we've got a committed Aberdonian and Dave ready to take over the button. And I hope in Dave doing that, it does alleviate any concerns both inside the club and also where fan base that this is in any way a US takeover. The club is in good shape. I think we've made real progress over the last seven, eight years. I think the success that Derek and the guys have delivered in the park, eh, the value they've built in a football squad, that's given us the, the platform and the momentum to get the club into the strong position we're in now. So I, I think that everyone around the club can take real pride in the fact that we've delivered a fantastic facility at Cormac Park. We've doubled our turnover. We're debt free. We've cash in the bank. We've got a very strong executive team with a fantastic staff. And I stand down confident that Dave, with my full support, and that of fellow board members and all the staff, that we can continue to build in the strong, strong platform that we've given ourselves. <laughs> From a personal perspective, I, I would just say that I've, I'm very proud to have the opportunity to lead a club I love over the last two decades. It's been a real privilege, but not without challenges. Like the fans, I've shared in the highs and lows in getting the club into the position we're in today. I've had to make some tough decisions along the way, along with the board, some of which have not always been overly popular with the fans. But the reality of football is you don't come into this game to, be, to become popular. I took it on because I believed, along with others, that I could help 
move the club forward. And I believe that we've by and large achieved that. Having worked alongside me for 17 years and played a major role in the club's success, Duncan Fraser has also decided it's the right time for him to step down. And in behalf of the board and everyone else at the club, I just express my sincere thanks to Duncan for all he's done to our great club. Board directors Ian Jack, Duncan Skinner and Craig Brown will also be stepping down to create space for the new investors to shape the board for the future. Craig Brown will remain with us in an ambassadorial role and Duncan Skinner will continue as chairman of the AFC Community Trust. Finally, I just pay tribute to all of them and all the staff for their huge commitment to the club and my sincere, sincere thanks to everyone for the support that they've given me personally. So I'll hand over to Dave now to say a few words. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and, and thank you, Stuart. Just uh, a few things to uh, go through before I hand over to, to, to Darren. First of all, I'd like to thank um, the board. Um, I've known Duncan and Stuart for 20 years kind of each, and the message um, that hopefully is conveyed is that this is one of evolution rather than revolution. Um, we've been working on this for a number of years now, and sometimes you don't know the timing of things that take place, but we felt this was the right time in particular with um, the collaboration agreement coming in that we'll talk about with Atlanta. Um, I personally would like to pay tribute to Stuart, who has put himself second for over 20 years. In the 90s, as you guys know, uh, most clubs overspent on the basis that the TV contract might mirror pro rata what England were getting. It didn't happen. So over the last 20 years, I think there's only three clubs, including Aberdeen, that haven't gone into administration in that period. And, and those three clubs, I think it's Celtic, Kilmarnock, and Aberdeen, Duncan, um, are, have not been relegated. And so um, we've seen through that period a number of clubs go into administration and owners walk away from their responsibility. Um, Stuart has stayed through to... Um, to the club in a tough period where we got close to about 15 million in debt, took the club about 15 years to get rid of that. Without Stuart's stewardship of the club in that period in time, then it would have been very difficult for myself and certainly my partners to be here today. But we've been debt free for a number of years now and under Stuart's stewardship, we went through three planning uh, phases, got the planning eventually for Kingsford and many of you guys will have seen that. It's a fabulous facility. So I want to pay tribute to, um, to Stuart for his stewardship over this and of course Stuart's remaining on the board as well and also thank Duncan as well. Duncan and I have known each other a long, long time and, um, and uh, he's been Stuart's right hand man over that period. Duncan's also remaining on the board as as a non-exec. So let me talk a bit now about kind of aspirations. You know, our vision and our strategy that we uh, outlined before remains the same. You know, we would like to be able to consistently uh, be a UF a top 100 club. I think we're at about 175 last time I looked. To be consistently there, we need to get to the group stages um, of the Europa League. And um, when uh, we did it, I think in 2008, I think, Duncan, there was only one qualifying round to go through to get there. There are four now. And so as we take a look as a club, you know, at Scottish football, then obviously with the, the income the Celtic and Rangers have, you know, and, and they're upping the ante there just now. I think Celtic, the last I saw, their wage bill was 60 million hours is getting close to 10 million now. You know, we can't compete from that perspective. Um, so for us, it's looking at um, you know, having great people in the club, both on and off the field, so we can punch above our weight, increase turnover. Um, we've seen great performances in the last few years with Derek and the team. And it's about infrastructure. And having the facility out at Cormac Park is critical. I, I just can't tell you the 
kind of accolades we get from our youth players and their parents seeing the facility there, the first team trained there all week last week. And that facility uh, has been 116 years in, in the waiting. And so we've, we've delivered that. Um, the other thing as well that for us is important is looking at football worldwide. You know, um, I think you're going to see a lot more collaboration take place worldwide. The economy is a scale, for example, and I'm touching on the Atlanta relationship between their great capabilities in America and South America and our ability to tap into to Europe um, from a scouting perspective kind of makes sense. Um, what we're going to do is take the next 90 days uh, getting Cormac Park done and as those of you have been out there, there's a bit of mud out there, there's still some work to be to be done out there. It's been a Herculean task to get that done and um, but we've got it done and so with Atlanta we're going to take the next 90 days to kind of go through um, you know, best practices on the football side as well as on the commercial side. Um, Darren and I have known each other a few years now um, living in Atlanta my family of season ticket holders there. And as I came back on the board, Darren and I started, we've nurtured this relationship for about three years now, Darren. Longest sales cycle I've been involved in. <laughs> but uh, got to know the Atlanta people. They've been here, number of visits, including their director of football, uh, Carlos Bocanegra. He had his team here last week doing a best practices with, um, with our academy people as well. Um, Rob Wicks, our commercial director, Rob was out last year as we look at our stadium plans and to take a look at best practices and, and there's no better example uh, in my mind in, anyway of that and what Atlanta has done from zero to get 54,000 average crowds. Um, Derek and Stephen Gunn, our director of football operations, came out at an international break, I think it was April time, and spent a few days seeing the training facility and going through how they go about their business and vice versa. So we've been slow and deliberate about putting this relationship together. Um, let me talk about the investor group, then I'll hand over to Darren. And so I've got two good friends of mine as, as main investors with me, Tom Crotty and Roger Lee. Um, we know each other through um, our link with Battery Ventures, who um, backed me a number of years ago. Um, we've, we've been involved in a number of successful ventures between us. Uh, but Tom, Tom Crotty um, played as a captain for Notre Dame in the 70s and was the biggest benefactor to the program that Bobby Clark ran for 17 years. So we had a, a common link there because obviously I know Bobby, been good friends with Bobby for many years. And Tom is also on the board of trustees there, very well connected. He also has significant links into charities and helped co-fund with Bobby's son, Grassroots Soccer, that have people like the Gates Foundation, Ford Foundation and others involved there. So Tom um, uh, agreed to, to join our board um, earlier this year and he brings great experience from a business perspective as well as, as with the, the charitable side. Both Tom and Roger uh, Lee this isn't a venture fund that's behind all this or private equity. This is their personal cash like it is my family's money that's in this. And their motivations are really uh, want to be involved in a uh, professional club in the UK. Of course, they did quite well out of the companies I run themselves and I managed to twist their arms to get involved too. Uh, Roger Lee is a partner at uh, Battery Ventures and I'm an advisor there and on some boards. Roger is heavily invested in a number of esports businesses. And so as we look forward to esports, uh, Rob is now, Rob Wicks has now got access to those companies as we've been to look at esports and potentially hosting events in Aberdeen as well. Uh, Roger won't be joining the board, he, he doesn't have the time, but as Stuart alluded to earlier, um, you know, we, we brought on some smart guys and those guys, and obviously the relationship with Atlanta is, is a strategic relationship. Um, it's fairly typical of uh, Arthur Blank's businesses to put, for want of a better term, some skin in the game to show that a partnership ship means something, which is why the two million has come in from them. 
from my personal perspective, um, you know, when I got back involved in the board, over a few months it was clear to Stuart and myself that um, the money wasn't going to come from Aberdeen. We have got some great support from people like Willie Nilly and Donald, the Macintoshes, um, Jimmy Milne, um, etc., and, and um, Mike Logie at Saltire. But it was clear you know, we had uh, some work to do, and so we kind of agreed to step up at that. I agreed to step up at that stage. So there's about 16.2 million come in to, to the club, 1.4 to the trust um, directly itself. About 9.2 million of that's from my family and the balance between Atlanta, Tom, and uh, and Roger. Um, it's a lot of money outside of Celtic and Rangers. Um, the five million that has come in as working capital um, is really because we recognise we want to be able to see as we evaluate clearly the consulting we go through for 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 Kingsford and the stadium, and we'll look at that. It's important we've got cash flow for day-to-day -day operations. For example, uh, Kingsford is going to cost us three quarters of a million a year, the training facility to run. So over four years, that's three million uh, that we need to cover there. So we've looked ahead at a four or five year plan, right, Stuart, and pulled that together. Um, so um, anyway, so that's kind of where we're at. I would say personally that, um, you know, um, I haven't heard Stuart not tell me the, the bad stuff about being chairman <laughs> yet. I would say that uh, um, I'm probably anxious, uh, nervous a bit, but I'm really excited. And I've found that to be a healthy kind of combination uh, in business. Um, it's interesting, and I talk to lots of successful people. What drove them to success was the fear of failure, which is an awful way to do it, but I kind of have a bit of that. Uh, in me, I've had people tell me that, like with the last business that we bought when it w was going bust in 2004, what a waste of money, don't get involved in that. By hiring and working with some great people, we sold the business for almost a billion dollars 12 years later. And I couldn't do it without a team just like we can't here. So um, our goal in a lot of ways is to put, put a smile back on the city of Aberdeen. I think in Aberdeen we don't talk ourselves up enough, maybe that's the, the northeast mentality, especially in a dreek morning, like this morning where my soon-to-be 90-year-old mother-in-law said to me, don't worry, it'll be sunny by lunchtime, David. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that uh, in mind, again, a, a big thank you to the, the board and Stuart for um, continuing to work with us, and I'll hand over to Darren. Thanks, Dave. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a real uh, pleasure to be here this morning on behalf of a &B Sports and Entertainment and Atlanta United. We're really excited to be here for the announcement of the partnership between our clubs. Firstly, I just want to echo Dave's comments for Stuart. It's pretty impressive. 22 years at, at the helm of a club in, in the world of football is saying something. So, you know, congratulations for that, you. all you've done for the club. So just to give you guys a little bit of a background about Atlanta United, for those of you who don't know anything about the club, we've been going now for three years, so it's a little bit different to 1903 in the history of Aberdeen. Um, we're in Major League Soccer. Uh, we're owned by a guy called Arthur Blank. So Arthur Blank, our owner, started up Home Depot. So think the B&Q of America. It's a Home Depot store. He opened the first one in Atlanta, and he built it to be one of the biggest retail um, retailers in the world. Uh, he also owns the Atlanta Falcons, which is the NFL team that's based in Atlanta, and the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which is the stadium that hosted the Super Bowl earlier this year. So that's Arthur's background. About five years ago, he brought me over, I was previously at Tottenham Hotspur, to run Atlanta United. So, you know, when we were starting the club, we had three basic principles, very simple. Firstly, we wanted to be competitive. Secondly, we wanted to have the best supporter experience. And thirdly, we wanted to be in the heart of the community. So those were our three goals as we built the club. And you know, we've been really excited with the progression that we've had so far. Uh, in terms of our sort of competitiveness on the pitch, we're actually champions in our second season. Uh, we won the MLS Cup, and this season we won the equivalent of the FA Cup for us, the US Open Cup, uh, as well as the Campionis Cup. So we've been managing to be competitive on the pitch, which was really exciting. The supporter side of things has just been incredible. Um, a recent survey for the last five years, average crowds, put Atlanta United as 10th in the world in terms of average crowd. And this is in a country which they said, you know, wasn't sure it was going to take to soccer in an area in particular that they weren't really, um, really sure was going to be successful. But, I mean, it's a great credit to, you know, 
the sport growing in America, but also just to, if you focus on your supporters and your fans, how you can create a culture and you can create that excitement. And then thirdly, our big aim was to be in the heart of the community. And that's something that's really important to us. And you know, I'll touch upon that a little bit in respect of, of Aberdeen and the great works that's done here. So why Aberdeen and why having a global partnership, this sort of uh, strategic partnership? I think firstly, you know, Dave alluded to it earlier, we're in the global game here with uh, the world of football. Uh, and so we feel there's some real synergies that we can have both commercially and technically from having a partner club here in, uh, here in Scotland. Um, from an economies of scale, everything from scouting through to data analytics, sports science, youth development, there's many possibilities for us to, to share those resources for win-wins for both Aberdeen and Atlanta United. So we're really excited over the next 90 days to be exploring and really deep, digging deeper into those sort of benefits that could be for both clubs. Now, why Aberdeen? I mean, there's a number of factors for that. Firstly, I mean, this is a incredibly well-run club and that was important to us because you know we didn't want to have the operational burden this is not something where we're looking to come and take over the club this is very much a well-run club and it's credit to what Stuart's done and Duncan in terms of positioning this club where it is six consecutive seasons of qualifying for Europe um, Cormac Park and what's been done here with the training ground uh, shows that there's ambition here uh, and it's a well-run club so that was really important to us Secondly, we're really focused on the core values we have at Atlanta United. And Arthur Blank has that across all of his businesses. And one of the most important is giving back to others. So what's been done here in Aberdeen in terms of the community trust really is uh, absolutely fantastic. From being the UEFA <coughs> Grassroots Club of the Year this year earlier, decided by UEFA, through to what you did with the Football Memories Program and the, the Alzheimer's. It really is impressive what's done in the community. And that was something that was really important to us as we looked to, for a partner club strategically <coughs> that we could work with. So that was something that, uh, you know, that really struck us as we, were, as we were here. And then ultimately, it's down to personal relationships. And Dave, someone that I've got to know over the past three years um, in Atlanta, um, as he mentioned, myself, members of our club have come here and visited. Uh, and what we've seen here is what we felt was a real connection in terms of culture around the club, what's happening here, that we could absolutely provide some real sort of win-win synergies between us. So, you know, we're really excited. We can't wait to, uh, to get started on the partnership. Uh, excited about what the future brings.